Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green proliferate deck featuring Azuri, Stalker of Spheres, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, a 4-mana 3-3, saying when it enters a battlefield we may pay 3-mana. If we do, we proliferate twice. And to proliferate, we choose any number of permanents and our players, and then give each another counter of each kind already there. So for the most part, we're proliferating plus one counters onto our creatures, adding extra loyalty counters to our planeswalkers, and there's a few other counters throughout the deck. Poison counters you can also proliferate onto the opponent, although we're not going heavy on the poison theme in this deck. And then whenever we proliferate, we get to draw a card. That's the important part. So for the most part, we're trying to play Azuri at 7 mana, so we can proliferate twice, which also means we get to draw two cards. And of course, there's a ton of other proliferate synergies throughout the deck that will let us draw with Azuri after we play him. And then I've split up the deck into a few different categories, starting with mana acceleration. Since we want to get up to 7 mana, we'll need a bit of ramp. And at 1 mana, we've got Elvish Mystic and Lenor Elves. At 2 mana, Explorer and Grow Spiral to draw, put an additional land in play. Got Incubation Druid, which can tap for one mana, and can also adapt to put three counters on itself, and then as soon as it has a counter on itself, we can tap it for three mana instead of just one. So there's a few other ways in the deck to put counters on Incubation Druid, so it can tap for three, so we don't necessarily need to spend the five mana adapting. So great synergy throughout the deck. We've got Into the North to find a Snow Land. I've got two Snow Basics and the Snow Dual Land to search up, so we get to play with our beautiful Full Art Capenna Lands instead. And then I've got Paradise Druid, which has Hexproof, a bit of built-in protection when it's untapped. And then some Ramp Artifacts with Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, and Mindstone at 2 mana. At 3 mana there's Midnight Clock, which also synergizes with Proliferate, as we can add additional hour counters onto it to refresh our hand once we get to 12 counters. But it's always optional, so if we like our hand and we don't want to speed that up, we can simply decline to Proliferate onto it. Cultivate finds two basics, one in play tapped. Rishkar can add counters to our creatures, and then every creature with a counter on it can tap for mana, so it can also give us a nice mana boost. Replicating Ring can get up to 8 counters over time, at which point we get 8 replicated ring tokens that each tap for 1 mana of any color, so getting to that point can also give us a huge mana boost to take over the late game. Strixhaven Stadium can be a fun alternate win condition. Every time we tap it or deal damage to the opponent with one of our creatures, we can put a counter on it, and then if we get to 10 or more counters while damaging the opponent, we win the game, so Prolific Proliferating can also speed up that process. And finally, Astral Cornucopia also works very well with Proliferate, as it will tap for 1 mana of any color for each charge counter on it. So if we start out with X equals 1, it's your typical 3 mana ramp artifact, but as we keep proliferating, it will keep making more and more mana, so scales very well into the late game. Then the next category are the one-shot proliferate cards that just proliferate once and then we're done with it. At one mana, Thirsting Roots can either find a basic or proliferate for one mana. Contentious Plan proliferates and draws. We've got Augury to take a look at the top three, select one, and then proliferate at instant speed. Serum Snare can bounce an opposing null and permanent. If its mana value was three or less, we also get to proliferate. Canker Bloom can be sacrificed to either destroy an artifact, enchantment, or proliferate. Pollen Bride Druid can enter and distribute a plus one counter somewhere, or proliferate. So that's one of the cards that could work well with Incubation Druid. If we put a plus one counter on it, it can immediately tap for three mana afterwards. Then a Smell Fear, first lets us proliferate and then we fight, can be relevant to get an extra counter from the proliferate before the fight happens. Mesmerizing Dose keeps an opposing creature tapped down and proliferates. Canopy can destroy an artifact, enchantment or creature with flying, and if mana value was 3 or less, you guessed it, we get to proliferate. Tezzeret's Gambit lets us draw 2 and then proliferate for either 3 mana and 2 life or 4 mana. Expand the Sphere can help ramp by taking a look at the top 6 and finding two lands to put in play, or we can also proliferate if we decline to select some lands, can also just proliferate twice if we want to. And finally, Plain White Celebration, get to choose four modes, and we can choose the same mode more than once between making two two citizens, returning permanence from our graveyard to our hand, proliferating, or gaining a life. So incredibly flexible, but sometimes just proliferate four times can be game winning. Then the next section are the repeatable proliferate engines, which can quickly take over with Azuri out. Thrumming Bird can hit the opponent and proliferate. 
Got the Skydiver, a 1 1 flyer that can distribute a plus 1 plus 1 counter for 5 mana proliferate. Channeler proliferates whenever we cast a non creature spell. The Gauntlet can let our Planeswalkers proliferate as a 0 ability. The minus 12 also gives access to an extra turn if we can build up our loyalty enough. And whenever we cast a non creature spell, we can choose any counter on a permanent and add an additional counter onto it. Then the Contaminator, a 4 4 Trampler with Toxic 1, so potentially a way to apply poison counters to the opponent, which we can then also proliferate to win the game, although our deck's not really fully built around the poison mechanic. But more importantly, if it deals comma damage to a player, we also get to proliferate. Evolution Sage, one of the better ones, whenever a land enters, we proliferate. Then the Tainted Observer, a 2 3 flyer, also with Toxic 1, and whenever another creature enters, we can pay 2 mana to proliferate. Staff of Completion can also help us ramp by tapping it, paying 2 life and adding 1 mana of any color, but more importantly, can tap it, pay 3 life to proliferate. And then Tacothal doesn't proliferate itself, but it does let us proliferate twice whenever we do, so it can be incredibly powerful with Azuri out, and we can also easily make it indestructible by removing some counters from our permanent. And last but not least, the Tide is a 5-man enchantment whenever we cast any spell proliferate, so this goes really crazy with Azuri out. Then the next section are the plus one plus one counter synergies, starting with hardened scales, which will let us put an additional counter onto a creature. We've got also lith to soak up any counters from creatures that die to then redistribute. Simic Ascendancy, another fun alternate win condition, and getting to 20 counters isn't very difficult once we have a few creatures out and start proliferating. You can also pay three mana to put a counter on a creature. Then a Defiler Vigor can let us pay Phyrexian mana for our green permanent spells, and whenever we cast a green permanent, add a plus one counter to every creature you control, which can also get out of hand. Vorinclax will double the number of counters on both Planeswalkers and plus one counters on creatures, so it can potentially let us ultimate a Planeswalker immediately, while having the opponent's counters as well. Then the Great Henge is an extra card draw engine, not that we need a ton of those with Azuri as our commander, but can still be very powerful, adding extra counters to our creatures as well in the process. Stone Cold Serpent, we can play at any point in our curve to help proliferate more counters onto it on a creature that has protection from a multicolored reach and trample, so some useful keywords. Voracious Hydra can also be very fun, can sink all our mana into it and then either fight an opposing creature or double its plus one plus one counters, so it can also be a great combo with Simic Ascendancy to potentially win the game on the spot. And then Hydroid Crisis, another great mana sink that will draw additional cards and gain life in addition to being a large flying trampler. Then we've got a few Planeswalkers as well, since loyalty counters also work very well with Proliferate. Kazmina can have plus two to scry, maybe make some fractal tokens that also have plus one counter synergy. And then a minus eight can potentially search for an instant or sorcery and cast it for free. So it can potentially find a time warp or a river's rebuke as some of our miscellaneous cards here that are just individually very powerful. Rebuke to bounce all the opponent's stuff back and time warp to take an extra turn. Also have plain white celebration, which we could search up. Then a Vivian Arcbow Ranger cannot use its minus five ability since there's no sideboard in Historic Brawl but the plus one and minus three are still great, adding extra counters or taking out opposing creatures or planeswalkers. A Jason Raveler can draw extra cards or bounce opposing creatures back. The minus eight emblem also quite achievable, giving us a way to counter the first spell the opponent casts each turn. The Fairy Temporal Pilgrim will make spirit tokens that get additional plus one counters whenever we draw a card. And by proliferating, we not only draw extra cards with Azuri, but we also get extra plus one counters on the Vigilant Spirit tokens. And then the minus 12 ultimate is also within reach. Nissa, who shakes the world, possibly the most important planeswalker in our deck, doubling the mana from our force. There's a ton of those in the deck. And then the plus one will put three plus one plus one counters on a land after untapping it and turn it into a creature, of course. So the plus one counters from Nissa can also synergize very nicely with Proliferate and doesn't take long to get to the minus eight ultimate, in which case all our lands become indestructible and we can search all our forests and put them on the battlefield tapped. And then Ugin the Ineffable gives us some more interaction with the minus three, can also generate a spirit tokens with a plus one and will discount all our colorless spells, including our artifacts by two. And then our Miscellaneous, as we mentioned, has Time Warp and the Rivers Rebuke, as well as Oracle of Moldaya to provide additional card advantage, play extra lands off the top. And the Magistrate's Scepter can potentially let us take extra turns if we remove three charge counters from it. Can be a little slow to get going for mana tap to put a single charge counter on it, but if we can proliferate, we can speed up that process. And then a mana base has plenty of basics, the channel lands for added interaction, couple snow lands for into the north, mostly lots of blue-green dual lands for mana fixing, blast zone offers a bit of interaction, we've got a fabled passage which is great with our evolution sage enabling a landfall twice, could play even more fetch lands if we wanted to, and then the Karn's Bastion can also tap to proliferate, which is a great mana sink in the late game. 
So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing Maronar, so probably a rat tribal deck here with a bunch of rat colonies. So we need to be able to beat a horde of two ones that grow the more they play. This hand is probably not quite what we need. I need some very early acceleration into maybe a reset button to bounce everything or take extra turns. This is a little bit better. Turn to Cold Steel Hearts, and then I can start proliferating with either Thrumming Bird and or Evolution Sage to draw with Azuri and hopefully pull ahead. So next turn I could see Thrumming Bird plus Snare. Opponent starting with a Pack Rat actually. Yeah, let's get the Thrumming Bird going so next turn I can play Azuri and it immediately draw. And then I could bounce Pack Rat now, would rather bounce the token if they decide to make one. Could have also played Staff of Completion, tapped it for mana, and then still played Thrumming Bird instead of keeping up Serum Snare. Which also would have been reasonable. Just want to slow them down a little bit here. Okay, when I'm going for a Replicating Ring. And then I'll bounce the Pack Rat. Okay, so time for Azuri attack. Draw with a proliferate. And hope to hit our land drop. Okay. So next turn we've got a couple options. Can get the defiler going. Or we could focus on drawing with Azuri. Although Defiler lets me play free Hardened Scales, which is pretty fun. And then Thrumming Birds gets to add more counters to the team. So our opponent could run out Maronar, which would be their entire turn gone. Goes for the Shinobi instead. Okay. So, yeah, I think we are okay playing out the land, even though I could keep it until after playing Evolution Sage next turn. But we're going to see quite a few cards in the meantime. And then I can just cast this for single green. Attack with both. We'll get to proliferate, add more counters, which will also get doubled by hardened scales, essentially. So yeah, we're doing pretty well. And then next turn between Staff and Evolution Sage, we have more opportunities to proliferate and draw. Opponent takes it. And the River's Rebuke is going to be excellent, so that's exactly what we needed against a bunch of rat colonies. Although we haven't seen any so far. Maronar gives rats fear, so they can attack past our Defiler now with a Shinobi and make us discard too. But we'll hang on to River's Rebuke. Okay, let's uh, attack with the team. Time Warp attack again, and that should be game over. All right, GG's. Time Warp, take an extra turn. And that should do it. Could have even played a Canker Bloom using the Phyrexian Mana from Defiler, but not necessary. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Tesseret, Master of the Bridge, an artifact deck. Our hands cut potential. Incubation Druid, hopefully ramping into an early Oracle. Ascendancy could add a counter to it, so we can make three. And a Stadium could be a fun alternate win condition as well, so we've got both of them in the hand. A Mirror Convert to make mana. And yeah, I'm not going to waste any time. Let's play Incubation Druid. Keep a basic in hand in case we draw the Snarl. Foundry could be powerful. And then for now, Oracle has the highest upside. At the very least, I can play an extra land from hand. Ooh, Metallic Rebuke. Yeah, the mirror making blue here. That's too bad. 
opponent's got their own stadium. And a Palladium here. Can make two mana. So we're gonna see Tazeret next turn. What can we do in the meantime? If I play Ascendancy... Can't quite add counters to Druid and tap it for three. So instead... Maybe play Stadium... And then I can still play Ascendancy, play Ozolith. Because we want to wait on Azuri until we actually get some counters going. There is also a Blast Zone to potentially use, but I'm not sure if that's really going to benefit me. If we do it on three, I guess it would have blown up Stadium and Mirror, but it's going to take a while to get to that point. And then Tazeret can get the artifacts back as well. So there's Tesseret leaving up three mana to maybe make a servo with a foundry. Or to hold up interaction, who knows. Now I guess Skydiver can just put a counter on Druid, that's even better than activating Ascendancy, saves us one mana. And then I would have six, seven mana left, so that's enough for Azuri and pay the three. Okay. Sign me up. And then we'll see if Ascendancy or Stadium becomes our win condition. Happy to add counters to Blast soon. Alright, and then we still have a Tainted Observer. And Skydiver can also activate to proliferate and draw with Azuri. Opponent making a server with a Foundry end of turn. And now Azuri can hold off an incoming attack to slow down the opponent's stadium. Treasure Vault makes two treasure. And a Sphinx from the opponent. They needed the blue mana from the treasures to cast it. So that can generate additional Thopters. Tazeret zaps us to 13, so that's killing us very quickly. Although Voracious Hydra was a nice top deck. So if we make a huge Hydra, can we make one large enough to win with Ascendancy? I doubt it. So 6, 7, x equals 8 is 16 counters. Well, I guess that would win with Ascendancy next turn. Question is, can Tazeret kill us in the meantime? It's not impossible, but not super likely, so I'm kind of liking this double counters on Hydra plan. So, three, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Checks out. So then in our next upkeep, Ascendancy will win the game. Can chum block with a Skydiver all day long. So, yeah, if they can deal 13 with Tazerets. They get us. Currently eight artifacts on the battlefield. Ooh, wow. Ulamog. To exile Simic Ascendancy, that's unfortunate. Counters move to Ozolith. But uh, was not expecting Ulamog to show up. Deseret with a minus eight. Finding Paradox Engine. Gilded Lotus, a bunch more goodies. Next turn, Ozolith, I guess, can go off and move our counter somewhere. So I might have to take the damage from Sphinx. Although they'll get replacement flyers. So it's not like Skydiver's gonna get a chance to attack and connect. Can I somehow win with Stadium? Seems difficult. Take four, I guess. Could always draw a Rivers Rebuke. Opponent can make a bunch more mana. So it looks like they're not done yet. Scholar of the Lost Trove, untap with Paradox Engine, and get a free Treasure Vault. And then they can sink more mana into either the Midnight Clock or the Foundry. 
Yeah, that was a powerful turn. If only Simic Ascendancy triggered an end step instead of upkeep. Didn't think fighting the Sphinx would have really saved us either. Okay, looks like our opponent's just about done here. We drew a land. So... Best I can do is activate Skydiver to proliferate. But we're not gonna win with Stadium here unless we draw something very specific. Can Blast Zone help out? Blast Zone on three. Still doesn't do a whole lot. So I don't think Blast Zone's the answer, but I guess we will leave it untapped. Proliferate. Draw. Finds Augury. Can keep digging. Although I'm not sure what for at this point. Pollen Bright Druid can draw. Soaring City. Yeah, I mean, we could bounce a flyer, but our opponent's got three of them now. So we're still not gonna connect with Skydiver in any way. So I guess we'll make some blue mana here. Play Pollen Bright Druid. Proliferate. Find a plan. If our opponent didn't have any flyers left, we actually would have been able to win with uh, Stadium by connecting with our Skydiver, but that wasn't going to work out with our opponent making an extra Thopter anyway. Okay, we gave it a shot, but Ulamog to the rescue. Oh wow, opponent actually took it, <laughs> and we win with Stadium. Okay, not sure if that was intentional, since our opponent liked our deck, or if they misclicked, but I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Opponent is playing with Awakened Inferno. Can be a controlling red strategy. So, what do we think of this hand? It's a bit light on the early acceleration, which we probably need. So we'll take a mulligan. This is better. Don't expect my Lunar Elves to survive, necessarily. But we'll give it a shot. So next turn play Mindstone and maybe Fabled Passage if we don't draw additional lands. Okay. I guess now we'll have to go for an island. Crossroads is untapped, so... And next turn Skydiver, turn after, could play Taimyo already, keep the Cold Steel Heart tapped down. Although now Tekathol's even better. So yeah, Crossroads on green. Untap it, since we were on the draw. And a 3-5's not the easiest for a red deck to kill. Opponent ramping with key to the archive. So they will be able to play Chandra with a land, even if we keep the key tab down. Then Chandra can minus 5, killing Tekathol. So, what's the solution here? If we can make Tekathol indestructible. So for that to work, I could play Tamyo for 4 mana. Plus, and then if they try and kill Tekathol, we can just remove the counters, make it indestructible. Could also now Boseju the key, but then the opponent gets a mountain. So it doesn't seem as good. Okay. So, 4 mana Taimyo. Plus. And hit for 3. Bone plays Chandra, but next turn we can pressure it with Vorinclex. So minus 5, this will cost us 4 life, but uh, we get to keep both our Planeswalker and our creature in play. And yeah, play Vorinclex before plusing Tamiya to get extra loyalty. 
Keep the key tab down and their opponent concedes. Awesome, yeah, they're gonna struggle to deal with an indestructible creature now. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Kozilek the Great Distortion, so call us a ramp deck. And our hand's not bad, we've got our own ramp with Into the North. The Rumming Bird to proliferate. So probably a game where we play a 4-mana Azuri. And then hopefully find more ramp along the way. And then with Thrumming Bird we can also proliferate onto the Krasis to make it bigger. Can start by fetching with Fable Passage. I'll get a forest in case we draw Nissa along the way. Next turn we can get our Snow Dual Land. And a Guardian Idol on two. Ring is nice. So next turn we can play Ring plus Thrumming Bird. Nice and efficient. And then turn after maybe play Zuri at four mana. To immediately draw once the Thrumming Bird connects. Sage also great. But we'll have to wait on that for a little bit. And then the Thrumming Birds adding extra counters to the Replicating Ring can also potentially give us those extra Replicated Ring tokens. So off to a great start. But let's see if our opponent has a Forsaken Monument here to double their mana. Territory naming Eldrazi. It's going to be their own Replicating Ring. It's a little bit better in our deck. But a treasure map can scry. Okay, so opponent's not really missing any beats either. Getting closer to Kozilek. Alright, so now we have to think a little bit. And I'm kind of liking Azuri plus Polenbride Druids. Proliferate draw. Proliferate again with the Thrumming Bird. That looks good. And then next turn maybe Evolution Sage play a land, proliferate again. Okay, there's our land for Evolution Sage at the very least. So we need how many counters exactly? Eight. So we're almost halfway. Paradise Druids can make a little bit more mana as well. So... Not this upcoming turn, but the turn after. I expect them to cast Kozilek. So we need to have a well-established board in the meantime. Cold Steel Hearts is acceptable. And now the Relic can also be sacrificed to draw. Ooh, Flux Channeler is also very nice. So Evolution Sage... We can hover over the crossroads, so we were on the draw, so crossroads is untapped. So Sage, play a land, and then we can still Flux Channeler at the very least, which are the engines we want to have him play before opponent can potentially counter with Kozilek. So let's try that. Find the lands, that's going to be great for next turn. And then I think Flux Channeler over Paradise Druid or Gauntlet. Attack proliferates, I guess I could have attacked first. Opponent does have Idol on defense, but Azuri can still attack. I guess they can also use Labyrinth to prevent us from proliferating with the Thrumming Bird. So okay, that's going to slow things down a little bit. And they still get to scry with the map. So next turn opponent plays Kozilek. 
output we have Channeler and Sage in play alongside Thrumming Bird, which they won't be able to block next turn. So that's three more ways to proliferate. And then the ring will make a bunch of tokens. So then we can sink extra mana into Hydroid and hopefully take over from there. Okay. Ooh, portal to Phyrexia instead of Kozilek. I was hoping to dodge at that one. So probably sack Azuri, which we can still replay pretty easily. Pollen Bride Druid is obvious. And then between Evolution Sage and Channeler, expect to get more value out of Evolution Sage than Channeler. And we'll keep Thrumming Bird. And then next turn our opponent can bring some of those back as well. Okay, so replicating ring up to six counters. And then I can play Azuri without paying the extra mana for it. And then play Blast Zone, proliferate onto it. And draw with Azuri. And then Thrumming Bird gets to connect, proliferate again. And then next turn we'll get our Replicating Ring tokens. For now, play Paradise Druid. So, opponent can get back Flux Channeler here. Goes for Pollen Bride Druid instead. Proliferates onto their own Replicating Ring. And time for Kozilek. Still 5 mana available. So they could still cast a powerful follow-up. But we should be able to cast a large enough Krasis so that the opponent can't counter it. Celestus, that's fine. Okay, extra mana, always nice. Defiler of Vigor, I should probably try and play first, even though it might get countered by an opposing 5-drop. And then we'll uh, still be able to cast most of our spells afterwards. Okay, that worked. So now Hydroid for how much? Probably want to play our um, land afterwards to proliferate with the Sage onto the Krasis. Can double tap Q, float all our mana. So this is X equals 10, 12 mana total. Can't think of too many 12 drops in the opponent's deck that they could discard here. And then sure, we'll use a Defiler mana too while we're at it. Hardened Scales, very nice as well. So you can play the Scales just using the Floating Green. And then play Lands, which will proliferate and add even more counters with Hardened Scales and Defiler. The opponent's deck also unlikely to have many 1-drops. Okay, so we're going off here. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, if we're not killing them this turn, we get to proliferate with the Thrumming Bird, get even more value, and overpower them next turn. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Naban, Blue Wizards. Our hand seems fine. Turn 2 Guardian Idol. Can set up turn 3, Tekathal. Although we may want to connect with a Contaminator first. So Naban doubles Triggers of Wizards. This does not seem like a hand where I want to play Azuri on turn 3. And yeah, double Faceless Agent's pretty nice, finding two more Wizards. Tekathal can double Proliferate. Or we can get this Contaminator going. 
I think Contaminator has slightly more upside. Okay, Panharmonicon to essentially triple the triggers here. Sanctum is tapped, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, we could play Azuri, attack, and then if we connect, we proliferate and draw. Or we could play Tekathal. Although Azuri still blocks the opponent's creatures, assuming it's not going to get bounced next turn, which is a real possibility. Could also Canker Bloom destroy Panharmonicon, but it's not the most mana efficient play. So, yeah, maybe Azuri attack and draw is the way to go. I'm assuming our opponent's not blocking, since we would still trample for one, even if they double blocked. Alright. So this turn could be bad for us. Might have to take out Panharmonicon next turn. If we draw a land, we would have six mana. Still gonna be one short of Defiler into Canker Bloom Activate. It's going to be a Protector instead, giving Ward 1, so a total of Ward 3, to the opponent's creatures. Okay, wouldn't be taking those out. So instead we have to build up a big board. And yeah, Defiler would be my only play right now, which I don't love. But it would be a way to start putting counters on Contaminator in future turns, so it can keep attacking. Since right now I assume our opponent would block it. Now we also have Canopy to destroy Panharmonicon, although we won't get to proliferate in that case. Could also start with an Explorer if we're not going for Defiler, which I'm still assuming is going to get bounced soon, so I would prefer to get immediate value. Okay, land is good. Could also play Tamyo, although there's nothing we can really tap down that's useful. So instead, I think... Uh, Canker Bloom destroy Panharmonicon is going to be our move. Could also proliferate at instant speed. But uh, I'll try this. Pass it back. Nykthos with 3 Devotion, playing a Caged Sun. So I guess we found our next target for Canopy. Can play Paradise Root and still Canopy. Or we can go Defiler, play a 1 mana Paradise Root. Add counters, but now they also get plus 1 plus 1. So yeah, we should deal with this Caged Sun while we can. And play Druids over Observer to make some more mana, I think. Cloudkin to draw two. And now Nykthos starts generating more mana. And a Mindstone. Still hoping to start getting counters with Defiler. So next turn at the very least we could Defiler play Observer for two. Essence Flux to Flicker Cloudkin, draw two more. Okay. So opponent's deck is going off. Hoping to do the same soon. Oracle of Moldaya could be one way to do it. Although if we don't see a land on top, we're going to be pretty disappointed. So I think I still prefer Defiler into Observer this turn. Because Oracle is going to be much more effective if we can actually draw cards alongside it to filter some non-lands off the top. Now if I attack with Contaminator as a 5-5, they could still double block Agent and Protector, so I don't think it's worth it, even though we would remove some Devotion. Although there's lots of powerful non-creature spells our opponent could cast here, including River's Rebuke, which would set us back to the Stone Ages. Key to the Archive for starters. Could also find a Time Warp to take an extra turn. Although our next turn could be powerful. With Oracle, maybe even Tamiyo tapping down the key. Put on discarding Brawl. Does point towards some counter spells being in their deck as well. A Riverwise Augur can double brainstorm here. 
So that's more card advantage. Okay, they've got one mana left. So mostly tapped out. Tazard's Gambit's nice too. I think step one is Oracle. Get more counters from Defiler, land on top, so we'll decline to proliferate, play land, Vorinclex is next. And then now I think I like Gambits over Tamiyo. Add even more counters to the team, so we can maybe attack with a Contaminator and connect. Okay, another land on top we can play. And then Skydiver, I can pay for one mana as well. Or we can try a three mana Tamiyo anyways to tap down key. Sure. Victory and our opponent explodes, alright, fair enough. Gonna attack for a bunch of damage including Trample, connect with the Contaminator, proliferate, draw more cards. And then if there's no Rivers Rebuke next turn, Vorinclex can take over. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the Queen among Bears. So Bear Tribal. Our hand's got potential. Stadium ramping into Nissa, even though we don't have any forests at the moment. Mox Amber makes sense with a two-mana commander. For now, boots to protect their commander as well. And there's our first of hopefully many forests. Play Stadium. And then end of turn we can add a counter in case they hit us. We don't want to lose the counter. Can of course use our canopy to destroy the boots, but don't know if we really care. Take two. And then end of turn add a counter. Time Warp's always powerful, but better if we can establish Nyssa first. So let's try that. And I'll untap an island here, in case they can take out my forest. Okay, so if our opponent plays a bear, they can add two counters to Ayula. Or they can fight, and Owlbear certainly counts as a bear. Takes out our islands. And Ayula could attack Nyssa. Okay, losing a land never feels great, but at least our forest makes double the mana, and there's another one. So yeah, we can untap the forests, or untap the islands, but then we may not have enough mana in general. So let's see, five, six, seven. Definitely casting Time Warp, and then yeah, I guess we can play Cosmina by untapping an island. Don't get to attack into the Owlbear. And Kazmina probably wants to scry for now. And Cornucopia isn't bad. Can play one for X equals one. And then still play Azuri to generate a ton of extra mana. So let's see here. Cornucopia X equals one. And then we're going to want to plus Nissa on the forests, because Mina can make a token. Let's say a 3-3. Three, three. And then Azuri proliferates. Get to draw a bunch. Those were some good draws. Tank for 5. Stadium up to 8 counters already, so very close to the alternate win condition. Yeah, Nissa plus Time Warp, two very powerful cards individually, and great synergy here too with Azuri 
and proliferate adding more counters to the creatures. Nessa ready to minus 8 ultimate, get all our forests out of our deck as well. And Bear Cub, 2-2, two, two. can add 2 counters to Owlbear or fight Azuri. Azuri down. But her opponent still needs to get past her 5-5s. Five I'll double block. Masked Vandal can finish off Stadium now since they put a creature in the graveyard. Fair enough. So no alternate win condition for us. But we're still in a great spot. And River's Rebuke may be the final nail here. So... If we tap this for blue, we can rebuke, untap a land, and that should be game. And our opponent explodes, awesome. Yeah, sometimes you do need the help of some powerful cards, and we definitely cast some powerful ones in that game. But in general, been pretty pleased with Azuri Proliferate, a deck that can generate a lot of mana, draw a lot of cards, and also gets to potentially win with some alternate win conditions, which is always a lot of fun. Maybe even ultimate some planeswalkers in the process, which is not too difficult once you get the proliferate engines online. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. Want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.